Well, hi there. Welcome to Markets Tomorrow right here on ET9, the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Tanvir Gill and it was a very good session in trade, uh, especially for viewers tuning in right now. The last hour marked uh, the momentum pickup uh, in the market. So it was a steady run all throughout trade, but the last hour, that straight green line, highlights the fact that momentum came in uh, in the dying minutes, taking the market well above 88.50. And the reason behind that momentum was really TCS's mega buyback uh, of 16,000 crores, which also fueled enforcers in the dying minutes of the session. Together, the two IT bellwether names uh, helped fuel the market higher. A quick roundup of the headlines from the market's desk uh, before we talk about how to approach trade tomorrow. It's a win-win day on Dalal Street as positive global queues perched Nifty firmly above uh, the 88.50 mark, broader markets turned out to be the biggest winners with many stocks uh, recording fresh highs. TCS was in focus as the board approved a share buyback of up to 5.61 crore shares at a price of 28.50 which is a 14% premium to the current market price of the closing price today. Tech giant is to spend up to 16,000 crores for buying back uh, about 2.85% equity via tender offer route. Meanwhile, Reliance Communications rallied on reports that Anil Ambani would be approaching Tata Sons Chairman N. Chandra to join forces with the merged Arcom, Aircel and MTS Combine. Idea was among the top gainers today as reports came in on the much-awaited merger with Vodafone to come in as early as this month. The announcement could be expected as early as this weekend. In the meantime, the shine in JSPL is reflected in the metals index too. JSPL rallied after the management said that they are looking at selling non-core assets to reduce debt and plan to optimize those assets. Uh, that kept the entire steel sector actually in focus. There's a ma massive setback, however, for ONGC as it agreed to shell out a staggering 8,000 crores over a billion dollars uh, towards royalty payment to the Gujarat government, thus settling its long pending dispute with the state. In the meantime, Havels and Lloyd's Electric both were out of favor after the big deal in white goods sector came through. Lloyd's fell the most in three months as investors sulked over no mention of using funds for shareholder return. Brokerages said deal to become EPS accretive over the medium, medium term that is. With voices lined up on the show, we will make sense of markets as always. We have Sridhar Sivaram uh, of uh, Inamp Holdings talking about his market view. Nilesh Parikh of Eduvaz Financial Services will do the same. Nitin Reheja will talk about his market outlook and investment ideas and Amar Singh will help our viewers with strategies to approach trade tomorrow. The question that we are essentially asking today is can the Nifty breakout above 88.50 sustain? Good evening Amar, good, day, good evening Nitin. Uh, Amar, on the charts, do you think that's possible? Yeah, overall uh, if I look at uh, Nifty in particular, so uh, Nifty has, uh, it's, uh, it's been trading very firm and slow and steady. You can uh, definitely say that Nifty is inching towards its uh, high of uh, uh, 8968, which it had uh, witnessed earlier. So, and uh, today also it was a sharp uh, closing uh, of uh, gaining almost 57 points to close at somewhere close to uh, Friday's high of uh, 8896. So and it was during the last uh, hour or so where the, where the strength was witnessed. Overall, it was a positive day. Uh, so the trend definitely remains uh, positive. One can look at any pullback towards 8845, 8850 can be used as a buying opportunity. Uh, now 8800 would be a good uh, uh, support level for Nifty. And so one can put a stop below 8800 and a target of uh, 8935. So overall, the trend remains positive. We'll have to be slightly cautious uh, because uh, 8968, the earlier high, that would be a level that would be watched now. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the big stock story of the day, which is TCS. Before anything else, uh, Sunita joins in. To summarize uh, the buyback announcement, the details of it, and what does it mean for minority shareholders? TCS, remember, Today closed 4% higher, but the 7-day chart would reflect the kind of move the stock has witnessed in anticipation of this buyback news. Uh, so if you could just bring up the 7-day chart, uh, you know, there's been enough of a run-up. There you go, about 8% or so from a level of 2300 odd, um, fueling the excitement that there was around this piece of news. Uh, Sunita, thanks very much for joining us. Take us through the buyback and... Uh, uh, what it entails for minority shareholders. More importantly, you know the uh, the price at which the buyback is happening, which is a 14% premium, is very attractive to tender shares. 
absolutely DC stock zoomed up when the announcement came and this was largely because of the price of 2850 uh, was announced for the buyback which is at a premium to uh, current market price and uh, 16,000 crore that the company will be spending to buy 5.6 crore shares will be done through uh, via tender offer which means that the, if, uh, anybody holding a shares of TCS can tender their uh, shares in the buyback which also means the promoters can also participate remember promoters hold large uh, shareholding of 73.3% in DCS uh, in case uh, promoters participate in the buyback then the minority shareholder acceptance ratio will be only 3.9% in case promoters don't participate then it will be 10.6% having said that most uh, analysts believe that the after the today's up move the share is currently pricing in most of the good in, uh, most of the good news and uh, considering that the growth will slow down for this sector uh, they are saying that uh, the buyback uh, uh, gives a good exit opportunity for a minority shareholder uh, as far as gains from this buyback is concerned fi 18 eps which was expected to be 139.5 will now go up to 140 which is a half a percent gain and uh, for fi 18 one year forward uh, the stock is currently trading at 17 to 18x which is uh, mostly the valuation most uh, p multiple that the analysts assign to tcs all right. Uh, thanks very much uh, for that, Sunita. Um, Nitin, come to you. Uh, summarize uh, what the announcement meant uh, in total about the indication the management is trying to give out for uh, the outlook of the business. Of course, with that hefty premium, uh, the signal is positive. But even so, uh, how would you look at uh, what this means for minority shareholders? So I think if you really see the whole technology business, I think this is... Uh, I think a pretty landmark in the sense that I think it marks a new phase uh, in the life cycle of these companies uh, from a phase where you know they were on a very high growth path and high P multiples they moved to a far lower growth path looking for more acquisitions and so on and so forth but now you're, you're getting to a stage where they're all sitting on cash uh, where the growth has started tapering off uh, we haven't seen the big ticket acquisitions for which these these uh, these uh, you know uh, the kitty has been put together. So I think the the fact that there is for the first time on these so-called technology companies a question mark being raised by investors and pressure coming from investors in terms of uh, the deployment of cash. I think uh, and and this announcement by uh, the, the bellwether stock in the sector to buy back is I think uh, fundamentally you know telling you that these are now getting into mature business space where growth is not going to be at the same pace uh, or even remotely close to the same pace in the near term. So I think you know there will be more uh, you, you could probably look at it more like some of the FMCG players uh, because they share you know similar uh, return ratios. So from that perspective I think it is great from minority shareholders although you know uh, at 3% uh, it's not a whole lot that a minority shareholder will, will, will get from uh, uh, and, and with a half percent uptrend in the EPS, I don't think it's it's really. But you know, overall, I think the announcement has fueled a re-rating in the stock, and that's what's worked for the minority shareholders. No, that it has. Do you think it's also fueled a re-rating for the sector? Um, well, this is a good, as good as an opportunity it can be for minority shareholders who do not believe in the long-term IT story to exit. I think so. I mean, if, if you don't believe in the long-term IT story, uh, you know, you probably should look at this as an exit point. Uh, but I think, you know, it's, uh, it's it's very interesting because what's going to happen over a period of time is now you have these companies consistently returning cash and, you know, giving uh, money back to shareholders. Uh, you will see a one-time adjustments to the uh, uh, EPS numbers and, you know, the, the commensurate effect that we've already seen in stock prices. So, you know, you will soon start seeing these as companies with very high return ratios uh, growing at, if I were to say like, you know, uh, FMCG type of earnings numbers. Uh, so I would be a little surprised if I don't see some amount of re-rating yet continue in these stocks. Although growth will be a question mark. Hmm. No, so... Um what would be your own uh, summary to this? Uh, do uh, of course for TCS, uh, you know, tendering is the best option. But for a lot of investors, long-term 
buyers and uh, people invested in uh, the other IT names because Infosys also got fueled on the back of this news. Uh, do you think uh, that it's a good time to book out? Is that your advice? So I think uh, if from some of the larger names, I think uh, uh, you know I, I would be pretty stock specific. But I think if other companies were to follow through and announce uh, similar buybacks, uh, depending on what price they announce, you could yet have some upsides happening in each of these companies. But I think uh, yes, you could as a minority shareholder use this as a rally uh, to book out because at least in the short term. Uh, yes, there is a question mark in terms of growth in the sector, but I think on a longer term basis, if you want to earn market-like returns, uh, you're probably going to get it from this sector because don't forget this is sectors with high quality management, a uh, lot of free cash flow uh, happening and this kind of buybacks of this size really indicate the confidence that the management has of these free cash flows sustaining. So I would not probably altogether get out of the sector, but as I said, in the short term, it presents a nice opportunity for the investor. I also want to talk about uh, some of the other newsmakers in the session. ONGC has agreed to pay over 8,000 crores royalty to Gujarat the government, and you know, as part of their uh, uh, dispute settlement, uh, which was long-standing with the state. Uh, that of course impacted the stock and I think given uh, their profitability it would be a bit of a drag. Uh, Amar, on the charts, ONGC? Yeah, overall uh, looking at ONGC in particular, ONGC has been in a trading range uh, because on the downside uh, it has uh, support at uh, 190 levels whereas on the upside again seems to be capped at 200 to 205 and if you look at the overall rally, uh, broad based rally that we have seen in the equities markets, ONGC has not been able to perform and it continues to uh, uh, trade sideways. So I would say that it's a, it's a avoid uh, uh, currently. Technically it's not giving any level of confidence uh, to be on the buy side uh, and on the sell side also at not at these levels at 5, 210, that's a major technical resistance level for ONGC. Uh, so I would say uh, better stay uh, stay away from this counter at the moment. Okay, uh, I also very quickly want to talk about Markson's Pharma because uh, there was a big shot in the arm given the clearance that the Goa facility got from the UK MHRC, uh, uh, which is essentially the UK drug regulator. Forty-eight sixty uh, locked in circuit twenty percent. Amar, do you have a quick chart check on this one? Yeah, overall, uh, looking at Marks and Pharma, it has a major uh, rally today from almost uh, 42, uh, 43 levels up by up by 20 percent. So uh, it, it would meet with some sort of resistance around 50, 52 levels because uh, uh, short term, yes, uh, this has, this is a major up move. Uh, but uh, long term, I would say, looking from a monthly uh, perspective, monthly charts on the monthly charts, it would meet with uh, resistance somewhere around 50, 52. If that is taken out then it's headed for a, a, a big rally towards 48, uh, so towards uh, 55 to 60 levels. Okay, Jamin, we'll head into a short break right now. When we come back, we'll focus on how to approach trade tomorrow. Welcome back. You're still watching Markets Tomorrow right here on ET Now. Uh, we are going to be headed into expiry and it's going to be uh, interesting on how the markets uh, take forward the story at uh, close to the heels of 8900 into the March series. But I just uh, want to quickly address uh, some of uh, the key movers in the session today. Uh, there was of course Reliance Communications on the back of them being in talks with uh, the Tata Group for a possible merger with uh, Reliance Communications, Aircel and MTS. So that uh, kept the stock in focus. Uh, Amtec Auto to consider issue of equity shares on Feb 23rd. Amtec Group of stocks were seen surging in the session. Uh, there was a lot of activity in the telecom space. Uh, so Bharti Airtel and Idea held out. Idea of course 
ahead of the all important announcement of his possible merger with Vodafone that may come by as early as this weekend um, was the primary gainer in trade. Uh, there was also uh, news on MEP Infra. They are exploring private placement option for their inwits, uh, private placement to offer flexibility to bundle projects and finance them. And they are looking to list uh, the invet by March 2017. But uh, very quickly, uh, Nathan, I want you to come in on the telecom space purely because there's going to be so much buzz around idea on the back of that Vodafone merger, what that would mean for the entire telecom basket. And do you think that there could be an opportunity for the sector getting re-rated for the players, which, um, you know, uh, as part of this consolidation, uh, grow stronger in their, uh, uh, in their position within the space and, you know, in terms of defending their market share? I think the re-rating in the sector is yet some time away, uh, primarily because I think you know uh, all these pe people are sitting on huge amounts of leverage uh, and one of the reasons which is driving all this consolidation is a falling prices and a fixed cost on your head in the form of the cost of leverage. So I think once we have that you, you probably going to land up having these three or four large players. Uh, even then, you you know you will probably see some element of competition till prices settle. So pretty much like in voice, you know, uh, prices came and finally settled and bottomed out, and you know there's been marginal maybe an uptick. Similar, the next play which is data, we have seen the you know the first level of uh, prices crashing. Uh, we yet don't know whether they will uh, settle down, but yes, eventually the way you would probably look at these businesses is they're good cash flow businesses. Uh, uh, over a period of time, uh, you'll have to look at it more as, uh, you know, steady state utility businesses. And so, yes, you would see, I mean, someone who wants to take a three or four year view, yes, ultimately you would see some re-rating happen. But I don't think that's going to happen in the immediate short term. Okay. Uh, but the move, uh, Amar, on uh, Bharti Airtel and Idea this afternoon? Yeah, overall, uh, Bharti Airtel has been uh, uh, very strong today and uh, overall, uh, technically speaking, from a, a, a short term as well as a medium term trend, uh, Bharti Airtel definitely uh, appears to be strong and uh, it is moving on the upside. However, it is now close to its uh, uh, ju uh, July, August uh, last year high of uh, 382, 83 levels. So, that would act as an immediate uh, resistance level because currently it's around 375. So, on the upside, is likely to meet with uh, uh, selling pressure or you can say uh, some profit booking coming around uh, 380 to 82 levels. So that's a level to watch out for uh, uh, Bharati. Uh, but yes, uh, the trend definitely remains positive. On the downside, it has a good support coming around 360 uh, to 355 to 360 levels. Okay. Uh, Nitin, very quickly on uh, HDFC Bank as well, and I know you won't talk stock specific, but even so, after that... Uh, uh, you know, FII ban being lifted, uh, you know, that opportunity window leading to um, more interest coming in from the FII desk. And now that it's, you know, that opportunity has been availed, uh, uh, do you think the technical trigger for this one will die out? So, you know, the upside is capped again? Um, you know, if you go by the past price uh, behavior, yes. I mean, you know, clearly you, you have these big spurts and then you know the stock kind of settles down and then moves up gradually you know it's it's not that you know i mean you know you've had this uh, uh, a cap been there for some time but that has not prevented stock the stock from moving up bit by bit gradually it's not uh, it's not a it doesn't give you the kind of performance that you have in some of the second tier private private sector banks but yes uh, i think you know longer term it yet is pretty positive that's why you're seeing uh, HFC Bank also adding uh, the maximum amount of weightage uh, to the market's up move in this noon session. Uh, in fact, uh, the market momentum was largely contributed by uh, this uh, index heavyweight as well in to the last few minutes of trade. Uh, Nitin, you've seen uh, earnings uh, pretty much play out uh, to the surprise of the market with the demonetization hit not being as severe. Uh, getting into the month of March, which is really the last month of the last quarter for FI17, what is your expectation uh, on uh, what earnings might look like for uh, for the year and how that would set ground for a revival, uh, which one has been calling for for a while, uh, into FI18? 
So I think you know if you really look at the kind of rally that we've had in the last two months, uh, the rally was and it's very typical of all markets where you know you have, you have extreme skepticism and pessimism uh, and uh, you know you have uh, an event like the earnings which proves you wrong and then you have this smart rally that the markets have seen uh, as such. Now, if you honestly ask me, given uh, uh, given the quarter four as we get into quarter four, I think most of the stocks are pretty much priced close to perfection. So, unless and until, and I think I think the story is again going to be driven more by the two facts that are happening. One is the fact that there is more, you know, the DIRs are getting continuous flow, and that is driving liquidity. And the FIRs, which were absent actually through October, November, December, have you now come back. So, a, you know, it's it's the buying pattern which is driving it. The second is, I think, uh, really, it's going to be again. Uh, more stock specific who are going to give you the outperformers uh, going ahead because I think uh, the expectations from Q4 have been well set by Q3 so any scope for disappointment you know uh, is really not there uh, as far as individual stocks go right okay uh, Nathan thanks for that uh, very quickly Amar your strategies to help viewers approach trade tomorrow for the immediate term yeah yeah, the first is uh, Bank of Baroda. Uh, Bank of Baroda, we've seen some profit booking coming in Bank of Baroda. So it can be a buy at uh, 165 levels uh, with a stop loss of 162 and a target of 171. So that's the first uh, uh, call. The second is Vedanta. Vedanta, we've seen a, a significant rally and the trend uh, remains positive. So any pullback towards 265 levels can be used as a buying opportunity in Vedanta with a stop loss of uh, 260.4 and a target of 274. Okay, gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us today with your perspective, uh, Amar as well as Atin, for your views and insights to the markets. Uh, we'll uh, call it curtains down on the markets tomorrow, but we'll catch you with the market coverage as always tomorrow morning at 8 a.m.